Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Now and then, a district attorney comes up against an alibi that seems unbreakable. Even though he may be almost certain of guilt, unless he can shatter the alibi, another criminal remains at large. Take the case of the man who saw murderous possibilities in a certain recorded sound effect. Hello? Mrs. Polk? Yes? This is Mrs. Brenning next door. Oh, yes. Can you come over for a few minutes? There's a certain matter I want to talk to you about. It concerns you and my husband. Oh, I, I don't know what you mean, Mrs. Planning. I, I, I'll sure be I... expecting you. Your husband. You're home early, Morton. Yes. Have you come to any decision, my dear? I gave you my decision this noon. Absolutely no. Josephine, you've got to listen to reason. George is in serious trouble. I don't want to hear any more about your worthless son. Never should have recommended him for that job at the bank. Sconding with all that money. I've got to have $10,000 at once. Call it a monetary advance if you want to. After all, your will leaves everything to me. That was my mistake. That didn't persuade me to change my will. But I'm going to rectify that mistake tomorrow. In fact, I'll call my lawyer right now. No, no, you won't. Don't touch that phone. Uh, what's that? Just what it looks like. A recording. Only this is a recording of a woman's scream. I'm pretty far-sighted, Josephine. That's why I had the time motor put on this record player. Now, since I can't get that money one way, I'll get it another. Don't you dare come near me. Put down that knife. You! What? Me? Who the devil? Wait a minute, Laura. Don't go in there. Well, your wife told me to come over. I hope it was all right to come in this back door. I... What's the matter, Morton? I just killed Josephine. You what? Do as I say, or I'll swear you helped me kill her. Morton, uh, are you out of your mind? Listen to me. Go back home. When you hear a scream, come to your window. Look over here. If they question you later, say you saw a man climb out our living room window. You've been at Lawrence, Josephine's first husband. Describe him as the man. But you, what are you, what are you going to do? Get an alibi. Patrolman calls in out here in the corner, ten past four. Just that now. Now, get home, Quick. Merciful heaven. Afternoon, Rooney. Fine day. Oh, it is indeed, Mr. Brady. Did mind slipping this letter into the drop box down the street? <laughs> Not at all, sir. Stupidly brought it home from the store in my pocket. <laughs> I've done things like that myself. Uh, here's a couple of cigars. Wait, and thanks. <laughs> what was that? Came from inside your house, Mr. Benny. Come on. Joe! 
Josephine! Josephine! You all right? Oh, good Lord. Josephine! Josephine! Uh, she's dead, sir. Looks like murder to me. Terrible. Terrible. I, I, I'd be using your telephone, Mr. Blenning, it, to call the homicide. <sighs> Get My fault, Harrington. Forgot to tell Miss Miller I was going to the library. Lucky I called the office. Nice murder, huh? Yeah, according to the medical examiner. It was her husband home when it happened. Yeah, but uh, he's clear, Chief. He was out talking with the beat cop, Rooney. They heard her scream twice, came in, and found her dead. You talked to Rooney? Yeah, but not with Blanning, though. He was gone when I got here. Gone where? Down to headquarters to put his story on the tape. Uh, they said he volunteered to go. Wanted to get out of here. I guess he was pretty much upset. Oh, no, naturally. Speaking of records, that's quite a record player over there. Yeah, honey of a console, isn't it? Must have cost plenty. You know anything about these Blennings, Harrington? Mm, just that he inherited a raft of frozen food money. Mm, a fellow named Blenning absconded from the City National Bank a couple of days ago. He may be a relative. District Attorney's Office. Paul Garrett, Miss Miller. Yes, Mr. Garrett. Get me a complete fill-in on the Blennings, 798 Parkside Avenue. Ages, relationships, family backgrounds, divorces, the works. Yes, sir. That's the alley, man. Right. I'll also check the city national. Get what you can on the Blenning who worked there. Oh, well, that's all. All right, Mr. Garrett. And check all the neighbors, Harrington. Maybe someone was seen coming in or leaving here. Get on it. Right. Good morning, Mr. Garrett. Good morning, Miss Miller. You're in early. Well, let's get these reports packed up. Oh, thanks. Filling on the Blennings, eh? Some of it. Records and identification said they'd have a complete report by tonight. I'll tell them to get all they can. I'll call them back, Mr. Garrett. District Attorney's Office. Well, how bright you sound at this hour of the morning. Mm-hmm. Poetry yet. What do you want to hear? <laughs> the chief there? Just a minute, Mr. Garrett. Yes, Harrington? Hiya, Chief. I'm at 800 Parkside Avenue, next house to the Blennings. There's a Mrs. Flora Polk here. Says she saw a guy come out the window time of murder. Thought you checked that neighborhood yesterday. So I did. She just told me she was home there. Too scared to come to the door. What, with the murder and everything? Okay, be right along. Wait for me there. Well, maybe Harrington's found something, maybe not. Can't always rely on the story of these women who don't dare answer the doorbell. I uh, hunch this will be a tough case. Oh, come in, Chief. Oh, smoke from that incinerator's thick. Blenny must be burning a year's trash. On that Blenny? Oh, uh, yeah. I asked Mrs. Polk. <laughs> you think with all their money, they'd have a gardener burning that trash over there. But maybe that's why they got their money. Uh, this way, Chief. And did Mrs. Polk telephone in this morning? No, I did a repeat checkup. Oh, Mrs. Polk, this is Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. How do you do, Mr. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Yeah. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Polk, would you recognize this man if you saw him again? The one you saw come out that window? Yes, uh, I'm sure I would. He was quite tall, thin, had a slight limp. Yes, I- I'd recognize him. By any chance did you recognize him? I-, I can't say for sure, Mr. Garrett. I'd hate to wrong an innocent man, but he looked a great deal like Mr. Lawrence, Mrs. Blenning's first husband. Well, how did you happen to see him come out the window? I was sitting here reading, heard a scream, got up and went to the window, just in time to see him. He ran across the yard and into the alley. Well, thank you, Mrs. Polk. You've been very useful. If there's anything else, I... We may want you to come to headquarters later on to identify the man you saw. We'll have the police pick up Lawrence right away. Like that cat that caught the canary hearing. Ah, uh, we did. Uh, that is, the chief did. Got Lawrence dead to rights. 
Did he confess? No, he says he was sick in his apartment for several days. The trouble is he can't prove it. Didn't have a doctor, nobody saw him. But Mrs. Polk took one look at him in the lineup, said he was the man. Quick work? Once in the dog's age, they break that way, Miss Miller. Seemed like a nice guy, though. Kind of bewildered. But you never can tell. Well, congratulations, Chief. For what? For buttoning up this case. Tell me something, Harrington. Would a guy with a bum leg like Lawrence's jump out a window that far above the ground? Well, I don't know. You might. Or he could have come out the door more easily and quickly? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean, Chief. A stranger might have picked the window. Lawrence lived in that house for years. And we're barking up the wrong tree. That's right. We've got to find out more about the people involved. Family undercurrents. Miss Miller. Yes, sir. Call Mrs. Dean, Mrs. Bunning's daughter. Tell her we're coming out to talk to her. Then call O'Brien, Detective Division. Have him put a stake out on the Blenning's house. Joe Harris, if he's available. Joe's a good man. Also a stake out on Blenning's store. All right, Hagen. Let's get busy. Now, Blenning's been playing around with Flora Polk. Mary Dean could have made that up, Chief. Could be prejudice. I don't think so. But I'm getting a motive and a pattern out of all this. Oh, there's a start. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know this neighborhood. A friend of mine used to work at that recording company over there. Sound department. Had to quit. Squeals and squaws were putting holes in his head. I'm Garrett, District Attorney, Mr. Blenning. This is my assistant, Harrington. Haven't had occasion to talk to you before. Now we'd like some information. Well, I'm glad to oblige, Mr. Garrett. What do you want to know? The day your wife was killed, you went home an hour before your usual quitting time. Why? For no particular reason, but I do like your manner. Surely you don't suspect anyone other than Lawrence, do you? It's barely possible I do. From the way you said that, I'm glad I have a perfect alibi. That's what you think. And just remember this, Blenning. There's never yet been an alibi so perfect it couldn't be cracked. Put that on your record player. <laughs> This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the perfect alibi, here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. I was practically certain that Morton Blenning had killed his wife. But to prove it was something else again. Since Rooney, the beat cop, swore that Blenning was outside the house with him when Mrs. Blenning screamed. Now, several days later at the office. If we could only find that murder weapon, Harrington. Well, the papers say Lawrence will tell the cops where it is any minute now. Ah, papers. Yeah, you better sit down, Chief. Take it easy. Wear yourself out walking around like that. Oh, that's the trouble. Everybody thinks they've got the murderer. So why break their necks up further? No cooperation. Well, we're going to... Or I'll know the reason why. Yes, Miss Miller? I just got a report from R&I, Mr. Garrett. Took it down in short hand. So if you want to hear it now. Yes, bring it in, will you? Yes, sir. And another thing, Harrington. If we could account for those screams... You could be wrong about Blenning, Chief. Uh, not that I think you are. But you could be. Uh, maybe I am. And I'm not giving up yet. I'll have to read this. Just to give me a response, Mr. Garrett. All right. Morton Blenning, alias Max Bannister, from San Francisco. Winch record is confidence man in Swindler. Ah, now you're cooking. Occasionally works Swindle with son George. Favorite racket, marries wealthy woman. Persuades to put money in joint bank account. Leaves with money. It works the racket half a dozen times. That's all, Mr. Garrett. Good enough. Thanks. Looks like he could be right about him now. So what if the guy is a swindler in a racketeer, Harrington? This is a murder case. The fact that he's clipped a half a dozen rich women has no bearing on the case. You can't sell that to the jury. Oh, no, you're so right. Uh, smoke, Chief? No, thanks. You gotta dig deeper, Harrington. A lot deeper. Gotta find that murder weapon and... Wait a minute. Smoke. Well, Blenning was burning trash in that incinerator, wasn't he? 
Yeah, what's wrong with that? Well, they've got a gardener over there. That's his job. Remember? Mary Dean said Blenning wouldn't do any work around the place on a bet. Hey, I follow you, Chief. Grab your hat. Oh, Miss Miller, have O'Brien find out if the Blennings gardener was given any time off, day of the murder or day afterwards. Yes, sir. What can I reach you here? You can't. I'll be looking at an incinerator. What if the Pope Dave's looking out a window, Chief? I don't think we'll let that stop us, Harrington. Well, no, but she might talk it around. That's okay with me. The word gets to the killer, might cause him to make a wrong move. Uh, here's your stake out, Chief. You see anything, Joe? No. All crash. Need me on this, Mr. Gurren? No. Keep going. Go ahead. They sure built this incinerator to handle that trash. Yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good thing those bushes block off the view from Blenning's house. Well, hand me that rake, Harrington. The iron rake. Mm-hmm. I don't see if there's anything under those ashes. Plenty of them. Don't they ever clean out this pit? It doesn't look that way. When you hit something, then... Yeah. Push those ashes aside with your hand. Here? Yeah? No, no. I wonder where the rake is. Did you find anything? Well, just this piece of a phonograph record. Most of the labels burned off. Throw it back in again, Chief? Yeah, you better hang on to it. It may be no good. Can't overlook a thing, though. Anything else down in there? Not this rake hit metal. No, I guess not. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Here's something. Ah. Knife blade. Well, let me see that. Long bladed pocket knife. Handle burned off. Doesn't look rusty. Been thrown in there recently. I'll wrap it up in my handkerchief. Yeah, I want him to let the boys go over it. Might be just what we're looking for. Don't go over that piece of phonograph record, too. You think they were both thrown in with the same lot of trash? I have no idea, Harry. Let's go. Yes, Flora? I had to come over, Morton. There were two men at the incinerator. They just left. Who were they? I think it was that district attorney and his assistant. I couldn't be sure. I just happened to see them as they were leaving. Their backs were toward me. Come on. Careful, Morton. You said a man was watching the house. Right now, he's down the block sitting in his car. Oh, I, I wish I'd never gotten into this. But you're in it, so keep your mouth shut and do as I tell you. Morton, you're hurting me. Please. You're going to testify at Lawrence's trial. You're going to stick to your story. You saw him jump out that window. He, he never did me any harm. I wish I'd never seen you. I tell you, I'm going away. I, I won't stay in this place another Laura. day. I mean that. All right. You're going away. That may be the best plan. I'll help you. Oh, will you please? Come over tonight after dark when that detective can't see you. We'll plan out your trip, where you're going, when you leave, everything. I'll come over him. Oh, I do need your help, Morton. I'm so frightened. You won't have to be frightened much longer. Run along now, Flora. And remember, after dark. Oh, I was just about to call you at the lab, Mr. Garrett. Anything new come in? Yes, it's Lieutenant O'Brien called. The Blennings gardener was fired the day before the murder. Call Detective Division back. Tell O'Brien the lab found nothing on that knife blade except the maker's name impressed on the metal. Mm. San Francisco address. Well, here it is. I wrote it down. Have O'Brien and this cooperation of San Francisco police checking retail stores that sell that make of knife. Right away, Mr. Garrett. Oh, any word from Harrington? Not this afternoon. He said he was going over to that recording company, the one near Blennings store. Yes. We got a lucky break on that piece of phonograph record. <laughs> District Attorney's Office. Hiya, beautiful. Let me talk to the chief, will you? Just a second, Harrington. Mr. Garrett. Well, thanks. Yes, Harrington? Hiya, chief. I just got wait on that record. It was one missing, apparently stolen, from their sound effects files. Any tie-in with Blenning? Yep. Up until the other day, Blenning used to drop in there quite a bit. Got friendly with the boss. Took a lot of interest in their sound effects. So, how can we use that? Get this. 
That sound effect was a woman's scream. You mean that again? That's right. Woman screams twice. Harrington, I love you. Get a copy of that record. Bring it to Station 16 right away. I'll meet you there. Right, Chief. Oh, Miss uh, Miller, call Captain Davis at 16. Tell him I want Officer Rooney there in 15 minutes. If Rooney's off duty? Get him there in 15 minutes. Pretty cute trick, Chief, using that record. Pretty deadly trick. Rooney seemed to be sure that's what he heard. Sure. It's what he did hear. Pull in here, Hyden. Well, if Rooney's right, it shoots that folk dame story full of holes. You think she's in on this deal with him? I don't know. Walk on the lawn. Don't make any noise. Wait a minute. Who's that? Joe Harris. He's been briefed on this. Mr. Garrett? Yeah. Mrs. Polk just went into Blending's house. Back door. No, we're going that way. Come with us, Joe. Yes, sir. I got a skeleton key. In case the door's locked. We need it. Careful now. Be quiet. Unlocked. entrance into this house? I have a warrant for your arrest, Blenning, alias Bannister, for the murder of your wife. I'll let my lawyer do the talking. What have you to say, Mrs. Polk? I don't... I don't know. I... Father! Well? Nothing. I've got nothing to say. Infatuation can be carried too far, Mrs. Polk. Beautiful record, player. I motor everything. I want you to hear this. Huh. What is it? You'll recognize it, Blenny. No! no! Officer Rooney has already identified those screens. What about you, Mrs. Polk? I don't know. I don't... Blenny? You got nothing to say. Maybe he'd like to hear that again, Chief. He'll have the chance. No. No, I can't stand it. I'll tell you all I know. Just get me out of here. Please. Please. Okay. If you're the victim of the circumstances that I think you are, you can count on my help. Next time, though, I pick my friends more carefully. Joe, take Mrs. Polk down to headquarters. We'll be right along. Yes. So you killed her with a knife, Blenning, when she wouldn't come across with her money. I don't know what you're talking about. And those San Francisco police are really on the ball, Blenning. They work fast. I don't know a thing. Well, where do we start throwing the book at you? The testimony of Mrs. Pope. All those whys of yours. Bigamy and murder. Better enjoy this ride down to headquarters, Bunning. It'll be one of the last you'll ever take. (laughs) 